गुड मॉर्निंग इन दिस सेशन वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द डायनेमिक्स ऑफ मल्टी बॉडी सिस्टम्स सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वील डिस्कस अबाउट द डायनेमिक्स ऑफ सिंगल डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम्स देन वी विल डिस्कस द डायनेमिक्स ऑफ मल्टी डिग्री ऑफ फ्रीडम सिस्टम्स एंड फाइनली वी विल ट्राई टू डेवलप द डायनेमिक मॉडल इन मैट्रिक्स फॉर्म सो देर आर मैनी अप्रोचेज विच आर अवेलेबल इन द लिटरेचर टू डेवलप द डायनेमिक मॉडल like newton euler approach euler lagrange approach d knock matrices bond graph method so out of these approaches the first two ones that is newton euler approach and euler lagrange approach are most widely used worldwide in order to develop the dynamic model of multi degree of freedom systems so in this session we will focus on the first approach that is the newton euler approach so this approach is basically based on the linear as well as angular momentum of the system so linear momentum that is rate of change of linear momentum is equal to the summation of all the forces acting on the system and the rate of change of angular momentum is equal to summation of all the moments acting on the system so the first equation is being proposed by newton whereas the second equation is proposed by euler so that's why collectively it is called as the newton euler formulation so first of all let's focus on single degree of freedom systems so in single degree of freedom systems the most common one is the spring mass damper system where we are having a body having mass m which is attached to a spring of stiffness k and also attached to a damper having damping coefficient as c the body is under the influence of external force ft because of this the body oscillates and the displacement of the body from the mean position is called as x of t so basically in this we are having three main elements the first one is called as the mass or inertia element which is basically tries to oppose the translatory motion of the body the second element is the spring element which is basically energy storing element and it stores the strain energy because of its deflection the second element is the spring element which is basically energy storing element which stores energy as strain energy because of its deformation and the natural tendency of the spring is to retain its original position and that's why it tries to oppose the displacement whereas the third element is the damper element which basically represents the amount of energy being dissipated by the system this may be because of friction this may be because of air drag this may be because of a resistance and it is called as the viscous damping where the tendency of the damper is to oppose the velocity of the body so in order to develop this equation of motion of this single degree of freedom system we need to follow some steps the first step is called as the free body diagram where we need to isolate the body and we need to show all the forces being applied on the system so let's say the body is under the influence of external force ft so as the force is being applied to the right side so shown like f of t so under the influence of this force the spring k is being stretched and as mentioned earlier the tendency of the spring is to regain its original position so the spring will apply a backward force towards the left hand side which is called as kx this is the force being applied by the spring similarly the tendency of the spring is to oppose the velocity so the damper will apply a force cx dot towards the left hand side in order to oppose the velocity of the body so this is the free body diagram where all the forces acting on the body have been marked now we need to apply the newton's second law of motion which shows that the rate of change of linear momentum of the body is equal to summation of all the forces acting on the system so under d by dt we can apply the uv formula of differentiation which shows that m dot x dot plus mx double dot should be equal to summation of all the forces acting on the system so in 95% of the cases the mass of the system will remain constant so this term will go to zero whereas in some cases like you can say take the example of a missile which is going to hit the aircraft so in that case this assumption is not valid because the rate of change of mass in the case of a missile is significant and we cannot assume this kind of assumption but otherwise in all normal systems we assume that the mass variation is negligible so that's why a rate of change of mass can be assumed to be zero so which means mx double dot should be equal to summation of all the forces acting on the system so we'll assume all the forces acting on the right hand side to be positive and all the forces acting on the left hand side direction are negative so that's why ft minus kx minus cx dot so on collecting the terms we have 
एम एक्स डबल डॉट प्लस सी एक्स डॉट प्लस के एक्स इज इक्वल टू एफ ऑफ टी विच इज द स्टैंडर्ड इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन ऑफ द स्प्रिंग मास टेम्पर सिस्टम नो लेट्स ट्राई टू ओरियंट द बॉडी सो अर्लियर वी हैव कंसिडर्ड द बॉडी इन द हॉरिजोटल डायरेक्शन नो लेट्स ट्राई टू ओरियंट द बॉडी एंड लेट्स द बॉडी इज इन द वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन लेट्स इफ देर इज एनी चेंज इन द इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन बिकॉज ऑफ दिस चेंज इन ओरियंटेशन सो दिस इज अ फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम सो दिस इज अ न्यू फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम ऑफ द बॉडी इन द वर्टिकल डायरेक्शन वेयर वी कैन से नाउ द एम जी फोर्स विल ऑल्सो कम इन टू प्ले सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस एम जी फोर्स देर इज अ चेंज इन द इक्वेशन ऑफ मोशन सो नाउ दिस एम जी फैक्टर विल कम इन टू प्ले so which will be shown over here so because of this mg you can see there is a change in the equation of motion of the original system so because of this mg you can see there is a change in the equation of motion of the system so is it the correct equation or no so let's figure out on collecting the terms we will find the equation to be like this way but this is not the correct equation so let's try to find out the reason why so we need to understand the effect of spring or you can say the effect of static equilibrium so let's say when the spring is suspended with no mass on this so the spring is having some free length as we suspend a mass m the spring will vibrate and comes to the static equilibrium configuration after a elongation of delta static so you can see after we apply a mass m now the spring has already elongated by a amount delta static so at this position we can draw the free body diagram and we can see that the mg force has been compensated by the elongation of the spring so we can see this mg is equal to k delta static so now under the influence of this force ft the spring will further elongate by xt so the total elongation of the spring we can see from the original mean position is xt plus delta static so now if we draw the new free body diagram so here you can see we have mg force we have this ft external force and we are having this spring force where the spring has been elongated by xt plus delta static so if we now write the terms so here you can see the mg force will be cancelled with k delta static from the equilibrium condition so after cancelling both the terms you can see the original equation is intact and there is no change in the equation of motion of the original system so the reason being that we have defined in the previous slide that xt the displacement is not a normal displacement it is the displacement from the static equilibrium configuration which means after the spring has elongated where it has already balanced the mg force so there is no point in considering these two forces along and then keep on cancelling every time so by simply saying that the xt is the displacement from the static equilibrium configuration we can simply neglect the mg term so then comes the general case so here you can see there is a body which is on an inclined wedge so again we are having a spring having stiffness k there is a damper of damping coefficient c and the body is under the influence of uh, the force ft due to which it is having displacement xt from the static equilibrium configuration so now over there we can again apply the condition so here you can see this is a force mg this is mg cos phi and this is the mg sin phi so under static equilibrium this mg sin phi will be counterbalanced by the k delta static so this is a new equilibrium condition in this particular case so again if you apply the same set of equation we will see that this mg sin phi will be cancelled with k delta static in the final equation and eventually you will get the same equation back so you can see this phi represents basically the set of all cases when phi is equal to 0 we have the horizontal case when phi is equal to 90 we are having the vertical case which we have discussed in the last slide and when phi is arbitrary we have the inclined case so in all three cases we can see the equation of motion will remain the same so what is the crux we can see whenever there is a spring either vertical or inclined we need not to consider the mg force because that has already been compensated by the spring element so now comes the multi degree of freedom systems so let's consider a two degree of freedom system having two masses m1 and m2 let's say these two masses are connected by three interconnected springs having stiffness k1 k2 k3 and they are also attached by three dampers having damping coefficients as c1 c2 c3 so both the bodies are under the influence of external forces f1 and f2 respectively 
and they are being displaced by x1 and x2 from their respective static equilibrium positions. So in order to develop the free body diagram of such kind of systems we have to assume whether x1 is more than x2 or x1 is less than x2 in order to draw their free body diagrams correctly. So let's try to see this. So first of all we need to develop the free body diagram. So in multi degree of freedom systems it's always advisable to draw the free body diagram of both the bodies simultaneously. So let's draw both the bodies m1 and m2. So first of all let's consider this spring k1 which you can see one end of the spring is fixed whereas the other end of the spring is attached to the moving body m1. So under the influence of force f1 which is being applied on the first body onto the towards the right hand side you can see as the body goes to the right the spring k1 is stressed and it will apply a backward force onto the body which is equal to k1 x1. The similar is the case with spring k3 because the body m2 is under the influence of force f2 towards the right hand side. So as the body m2 moves to the right the spring k3 is being compressed and the tendency of the spring is to regain its normal position so that's why it will try to oppose the motion x2 thus it will apply a outward force on the m2 body that is towards the left which is equal to k3 x2 similar things will be applied by damper c1 and c3 so the force applied by the damper on the first body is c1 x1 dot whereas the force being applied by the damper c3 on body m2 is c3 x2 dot so these two cases are pretty simple because in both the cases you can see one end of the spring is fixed whereas the other end of the spring is connected to a moving body now comes to the spring k2 which is called as a coupled spring in this case you can see both the ends of the spring are attached to movable bodies that's why it is called as a coupled spring so under this condition in order to develop the forces correctly we have to assume whether x1 is greater than x2 or x1 is less than x2 so let's take the first case where x1 is greater than x2 under the influence of two forces f1 and f2 so here you can see as both the bodies move to the right as shown in this figure as both the bodies move to the right and with x1 is more than x2 the bodies will eventually come closer to each other which means that the k2 spring is compressed and it will apply a outward force on both the bodies and the magnitude of force is k2 into x1 minus x2 because x1 is greater so that's why we have k2 into x1 minus x2 the similar is the tendency of the damper so we have the force due to damper is c2 into x1 dot minus x2 dot let's consider the next case when x1 is less than x2 so under this case so as x1 is less than x2 and both the bodies are moving towards the right we can see that the distance between the bodies will increase and the state of the spring k2 is stretched so as k2 is under tension it will apply a inward force on both the bodies it will pull both the bodies towards itself and that's why the direction of uh, these two arrows have changed now and also you can see the force applied by the spring is k2 into x2 minus x1 because now x2 is more than x1 the similar thing is applicable for the damper and the damping force can be written as c2 into x2 dot minus x1 dot so here both the free body diagrams are placed side by side the first case is the on the left hand side we have x1 greater than x2 on the right hand side we are having x1 less than x2 so under both the assumptions you can see there is a change in the sign over here here it is x1 minus x2 here it is x2 minus x1 and also there is a change in the direction of the arrow so these minus sign and the direction of arrow will counterbalance each other so eventually you can see that the equation of motion will turn out to be same so which means that equation of motion is a property of the system and it does not depend upon any assumption as well as any initial condition so now let's try to develop the free body diagram so on collecting the terms we can see so after developing the free body diagram next we need to apply the newton's second law for the first body which shows that rate of change of linear momentum of the first body that is m1 x1 dot should be equal to summation of all the forces acting on the first body which is equal to f1 t minus k2 into x1 minus x2 minus c2 into x1 dot minus x2 dot minus k1 x1 minus c1 x1 dot 
so after collecting the terms similarly we can write the equation of motion of the second body where the rate of change of linear momentum of the second body that is m to x2 dot should be equal to this expression so now we can collect the terms for the first equation we have m1 x1 dot plus c1 plus c2 times x1 dot minus c2 x2 dot plus k1 plus k2 times x1 minus k2 x2 equal to f1 of t and for the second body we have m2 x2 double dot minus c2 x1 dot plus c2 plus c3 times x2 dot minus k2 x1 this dot should not be there plus k2 plus k3 times x2 equal to f2 so after developing equation of motion of both the bodies we are now in a position to write them in matrix form so let's see the structure of the equation so this is the representation of the dynamic model in matrix form which you can see having one to one correspondence with the equation of motion written in the scalar form so here you can see m is a scalar whereas this m is a matrix similarly you have c and k are scalars over there whereas this c and k are matrices over there and this x of t is the displacement of uh, the single body whereas this x of t represents the vector of displacements so let's rewrite both the equations now we have this so for this two degree of freedom system we have this x t vector as having components x1 of t and x2 of t which is written over here as vector of displacements vector of velocities vector of accelerations and here we have the vector of forces so now we can write the matrix form so here you can see from the first equation you can see m1 x1 double dot you have the contributions from the x1 double dot so we can write m1 and there is no contribution from the x2 double dot term so that is zero so then we have for velocity we have c1 plus c2 this is a contribution from x1 dot so then we have minus c2 contribution from x2 dot similarly we have k1 plus k2 this is a contribution from x1 side and then minus k2 this is a contribution from x2 side is equal to f1 of t so that is the first row of the matrices which comes from the first equation of motion so then comes the second row of this matrix which belongs to the second equation of motion here you can see there is no contribution from x1 double dot so that term goes to zero and the second term is m2 so then we have x1 dot here we have minus c2 and then x2 dot term we have c2 plus c3 so then we have x1 which is equal to minus k2 over here and then we have x2 which is equal to k2 plus k3 and finally this f2 is already written over here so this is the way we can write the matrices so this is the final matrix which is called as the inertia matrix the next matrix containing all the coefficient of damping elements is known as the damping matrix and the third matrix containing all the stiffness is, is called as the stiffness matrix so this vector is containing all the displacement is called as vector of displacements and the vector containing all the forces is called as the vector of forces thank you